of the local chaos. We're gonna do it ourselves. That's it. This is Zambia, obviously. It's a big landing. Arriving in our first chaotic African country, Zambia. This guy wants to sell us something, and he's fighting with the other guy who tried to sell us something. But he's not selling us something, he's just taking us to his office. So we've done our We're done. homework. So we, so we pay and for the carbon tax for the entire year, 50 US. 50 That's very nice. Our other stamp, our other stamp, and our other stamp. Given by the same man but from different, two different offices. Different offices, so we had to wait for him twice. <laughs> that was pretty good. But people were very nice and helpful. Yeah. So now Let's we're go. sorted, and uh, maybe we'll spend an hour here, but that was pretty informative and yes. interesting. And uh, I'd say that challenging. it's time to hit the road. faction in the rapids the slow rapids were late So tell us how you went, Baha. It was a good game. I was uh, two half of uh, 30 minutes. And half a pitch with small uh, uh, goals. Uh, he looked naked. I was feral. I almost died. I almost had a cramp at some stage, but I uh, managed to score a goal, so which was good. Good individual uh, action on my side, and <laughs> the team did great, and we finished with uh, draw four to four. That's amazing. <laughs> That's it. Behind me, that's the real deal. That's the big falls, 208 meters. She stole the height of the Niagara Falls. Here is 10 million liters per second, which is far over the Niagara Falls. It's just a little wee Zambezi down there. We're gonna check it out closer by rafts. And I think people are gonna go kayaking with some extreme action on the Zambezi. So where are we going tomorrow? That's it. That's where we're going. The Zambezi.
Africa, we're in uh, Kafue National Park, Northern Section. We're about to enter here, so we are uh, registering uh, to the office. But check it out. The office at the moment is under construction. Okay, so um, let's have a look at the temporary office. That's it. <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't take this. So we're on a game drive in Cafue National Park and uh, we don't want to open the windows. Because it's, it's a like there's a lot of titsy flies. And they bit me. They tried to get in the car, they are feral as. It's unbelievable. That's a titsy fly. They're quite long. Bit bigger than normal flies, and they really sting badly. Yeah, they're through not your clothes, it through the clothes as well. Yeah. So we've seen some bush bugs. Yeah, polka dotted antelopes. The new antelopes uh, for us. So we're gonna tick out, tick off few boxes tonight. That's good. So let's keep going. So Peppa. Yeah, show me what you've done yesterday. I cut out all these little Oh. All by myself. Just in case we get lost, we know where to go. All on the same side. So uh, that's it for Kafue National Park. Um, we're gonna we can't head. afford to stay any longer. <laughs> we're gonna go uh, slowly but surely towards Malawi. That's our next destination, but probably in a few days, three to four days. Uh, that was great here. We had a good night drive. Yeah, it was lovely. That's very um, nice and peaceful campsite here, surrounded by hippos. <laughs> All right, next stop, Lusaka. Lusaka. Can we try again? We try again. Please. Yes. Okay. Open eyes. Oh, Lorraine. Got little sheep over there. <laughs> I'm a <laughs> So Pichu. Another tormented life, a uh, tormented night. Yes. You're almost fixed now. <laughs> and My second in three days, so being a little bit sick. But that's the real Africa experience. That's part of it. It has to be extreme in all the aspects. So we spent a night in a village, and that's also the real Africa. <laughs> and I spent the night trying to find discreet corners to leave little deposits and looking out for pigs and chickens. But yeah. Bye. What the? There's a bit of a traffic jam uh, in the market actually. There's the car that tried to make his way through. What the? 
Everybody has to pack up their potatoes and all the rest. But drama is unfolding. Yeah. Yeah, nice. <laughs> we already had breakfast. Uh, so huh? Tomorrow, tomorrow, we can, tomorrow we come back and we'll have one. That's very tasty indeed. That was our last mission uh, in Zambia. So we just spent about five dollars at that market, and we've probably got food for the next few days. So we're gonna cross the border and go to Malawi. That's our next destination. And I've got one million quarter. Uh, one more time, uh, I'd say it's time to hit the road. Everything went according to the plan. Mm. What do we have here? We've got the products of our successful market shopping today. We're going to have a beautiful salad for dinner with our fresh juicy tomatoes, cucumber, and we're going to make a beautiful fruit salad. Um, there's some strawberries that are missing, and then we've got this. And this is quite large, but this is how you're supposed to eat it. <laughs> I can't <laughs> eat that. That's the biggest lollipop in the world. Big sugar cane mama. <laughs> Basically, cut off a bit <laughs> and cool. This is sugar cane at Cool Runnings, Malawi. So, welcome to Lake Malawi. Here we are. The king is out because we need a bit of uh, new cutting action for our lollipop. All natural biodegradable without colorants, artificial preservatives, and all the rest. So, that's how you bite it again. <laughs> Pichu, what is uh, the, the cocktail of the day? Hmm. So, we find this kind of alcohol for six bucks. Uh, it's 43%. We thought it would be rum because it's made from cane. Yeah, that's which is like pirate. But it tastes more like vodka. So you dip a sugar cane stick in there. Straight in. Okay. Straight in. Yeah. And then stuff. Mmm. That's pretty yummy actually. Mm. But the alcohol is quite rough. It would be good to put the sugar into the vodka. Yeah, and not the other way around. Well, it's actually what we do. Hello, sir. I said to go to the shop. Turn number two, Joe. She makes a cute looking You are looking for the shopping. We like to look at these fabrics. All right. How much does he charge this lady? This one? 500 departure. How do you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because they work together. <laughs> <laughs> That's a deal. You need to pay now. <laughs> oh, sorry. But it depends if you, you, you want to have a few of island, it's just. Yeah. 
as you were saying, when the medical missionary dies of malaria, it's not very good news. Very good news. Yeah, lucky. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've tried his best you now, at least to find medication, but yeah. <laughs> That's our little beach, private beach. How do you feel about snails? Today, I'm gonna brave the snails. You're a man for me. Against the snails. Be careful not to stay more than 10 minutes. Let's go. It's enormous. Where are going? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. So we are waiting for our meal. Old bride party like must turn night, up. We waited for our meal. Yeah, but we, yeah. And it didn't really turn up, so we in, ate something pretty interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but tonight, for seven bucks, we've got like old bride fish plus rice and fries for the two of us, plus fire, and it's gonna be all cooked for us. So we're still waiting for Simon, a guy that we met on the road. For seven dollars. If it sounds too good to be true, it just might be too good to be so true. So we'll find out in a couple of hours of time. We are waiting for our dinner on the beach. I think our dinner is, is there. He turned up and I felt bad because he said, oh, everyone told me you were looking for me. Well, it was like two hours in advance. <laughs> two hours early. I've just been anyway. asking people whether he was trustworthy or not. So he's just over there preparing. And as a gift for him, we're going preparing to give the fish. Him this. Oh yeah. It's something interesting that we picked up on the road. We picked we picked that up on the market yesterday, and uh, it's uh, pretty interesting. It's worth twenty cents, <laughs> and it's made of it's alcohol and something else that is something. solid. <laughs> and Part where of my the <laughs> and a bit um, slimy as well. So yeah, it's going to be our, our present. Yeah. I'm sure you enjoy as is a local yeah. So this is actually where we slept last night. Ten mates hole out this window. And uh, the guy is coming soon. But uh, today, my tissue oh, is not on my phone. My neck is stuck. Mm. So, I decided that I'm gonna go for the walk with the guide and for two or three hours because it's like six at the moment, six a. Come back at ten and we go and get the picture fixed, try to find a chiropractor or something like that, so <laughs> or a guru or a, a witch <laughs> to fix her. So that you know, home to home. <laughs> Sometimes more than an adventure, it's also a physical commitment. <laughs> and uh, Peppa is actually paying the price. <laughs> Don't be okay, my love. Watch out, you're standing on his flowers. Oh. oh, shit. Oh. I'm gonna actually go to that peak there. It's gonna take like a one and a half hours to get there. Up there, at this peak, and he collects the stones, it's crystal quartz, and all the rest. So we can have a look and see them there if we're lucky in the environment. That's stunning, Pichoué. It's a bit of Fish River Canyon action there.
could take the whole village after the take there and at the point you can take that side. So how far are we from the, the point? Uh, maybe one hour, 30 minutes. One hour, 30 minutes. Sure. You don't realize that it's a video camera and they're all moving, thinking that's actually a camera. Now there's no marked track to the top, so it's up to us to go in four-wheel drive with um, our shoes. And for some of us, our bare feet, I don't know how these little guys they do, but they just climb and walk like little okay. goats, hopping from rocks to rocks. It's amazing. One uh, has got probably a pneumonia and is able to follow us. It's very steep mountain. That's beautiful. So we are not on the Gorilla Walk, we're just on the Gemstone Walk, still in Malawi. And the top should not be too far now, hopefully. Been walking for maybe a couple of hours. After Tough climbing, now we're reaching the top. Well, our little friends, one, two, three, yes, they're all there. That's it, one more time, top of the world, and check it out. That's absolutely stunning. Big Mama. It's probably somewhere over here. That's Big Mama over there. So we made it to the top? Not quite. Not quite. We've been walking for 45 minutes after a bit of a struggle in the bush, finding the right track, but uh, now that's it. They would call this track in New Zealand, in Tungari, especially the Devil's Staircase. With these big boulders and uh, big stairs to climb, but uh, we're gonna make it, hopefully. Four hours to go, potentially. And we're going behind these big mamas. How are you? 
No worries, it was not me. That's what I call the hard way. Money. Pretty bueno. It's a very odd backpack to carry your jindles. That's our track for the next minute. We climb up 1000 meters in two hours. Now it's probably around uh, 1800 meters. We've got two to 300 meters to go. Probably two and a half hours to go to the hut. So this is where we started, somewhere around here. So here we are at the junction. Which means that uh, most of the hard climb is behind us. It's just probably an hour to go on some pretty flat tracks, maybe four or five k's. We'll do. And uh, for the little story, we met one of these porters and uh, gave us a bit of his background, as he Can said. I tell you about my background. And that is a schoolboy working on for lost holidays. His mother, lost his father. And uh, so he asked for something, obviously, as I said, he even asked me for my shoes. It's like, I better be joking. He was that close to ask me for my wife as well, so... I probably would have given it to you. Uh, no. That's how it doesn't matter, it's very nice, but <laughs> they're always asking for something. Anyway, let's go. New Zealand or France. It can be in either New Zealand Alps or the French ones. These beautiful flowers all around. But anyway, that's the end of the walk for today because I can see some bush loos over there and that must be part of our hut. So that's it. We're quite happy. Bit of stretching action. So. so, Pichu, what do you think about speedos in nature? Speedos and wildlife. I think it's time for a swim. <laughs> All right. Check out this jacuzzi with view, I mean in the mist, of uh, the Malawi plain below. So we've been on the road for two months already. Uh, we're in Malawi at the moment. On Mount Malangi. Mount Malangi, that's beautiful, eh? Yeah, it is beautiful. I was just thinking that when you travel for seven months overland, it's important to have some times like this when you have nothing to worry about. If we don't have the car, so we don't have to worry about it if it's locked or clean or working, mechanically sound. We don't have any administration worries, no visas, papers, carne, licenses, nothing to think about there. It's just us in the mountain. We can buy coke at 2,000 meters. We just cook the food we've got and it's very relaxing. Because over seven months traveling and living out of the car it can be a little bit tiring at times and you can't maintain the excitement of like your summer holidays every day. Sometimes it's a bit tiring, sometimes you feel tired, sometimes you feel sick. Here in Zambia and Malawi we've found that there's just people everywhere. Like when we were at Cape McClear we were just enjoying a nice peaceful moment, swimming We'd gone for a swim to look at the cichlids and then out of thin air someone approaches you to ask if you want to buy some jewellery. <laughs> it's like the last thing you'd want to do when you're sitting in your togs with nothing. Even up here on the mountain they say like give me money, give me shoes as if you've just got a stock of things that you can hand out to Africans. 
wherever you are. <laughs> so yeah, I guess to be up here and to be just by ourselves, pretty much, except for the six Italians and the one wearing only his underwear, who <laughs> 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 not. But it's pretty nice to be here. Oh, it's been five years since uh, Hong Tum Adventure um, started germinated. Anyway, so it's uh, try to make the most of it every day because I know I've been waiting for the trip for such a long time that uh, I'm trying to yeah make the most of it and in the hard times, not like like it was today or over the last few days. But it's not it's not really hard time. Never had any big bad time apart from a yeah, um, couple of diarrheas but uh, as part of the game anyway but so I'm trying to think when it's not uh, easy indeed it's been a overlander it's not being on holidays every day but I try really to think about what we're doing and how lucky we are because uh, you meet sometimes you meet these people and they're just going on a trip for like a couple of weeks like some Australian for instance and they said oh, Right, you're so lucky, I wish I can do that, or oh, if I was yeah, a bit younger, it's probably the kind of things I would have enjoyed doing. You're lucky, I'm very jealous. Yeah, it's what they said most of the time, these people say, you're je I'm very jealous, you're lucky. And so I try to keep that in me and to remember that because it's true that we are very, very lucky. It's been two months, I've been uh, through five countries now, and you realize that being a Novelander, it's uh, something very special. It's something kind of uh, something in between adventure and tourist so it could be uh, an advent tourist yeah. a tourist doesn't know what he did and uh, doesn't remember what he did and uh, while an adventure doesn't know where he's going to so I think it's a little bit we're a little bit in the middle of that uh, so Pish, not too sad to leave Malawi today a little bit sad, but I'm excited about Mozambique. One dollar, one kg prawns, apparent, apparently. Fish, that's that's beaches, a good bargain. Portuguese speaking. This is the road to Mozambique. Coming through the beautiful tea plantations. Mount Melanji in the background 